Welcome to the presentation on basic addition. I know what you're thinking, Sal. Addition doesn't seem so basic to me. Well, I, I apologize. I hope I, I hopefully by the end of this presentation or, or in a couple of weeks it will seem basic. So let's get started with uh, I guess we could say some problems. Well, let's say I start with a with a with an old classic. One plus one, and I think you already know how to do this, uh, but. I'll, I'll kind of show you a way of doing this in case you don't have this memorized or, or you, you haven't already mastered this. You say, well, if I have one, let's call that a avocado. If I have one avocado, and then you were to give me another avocado, how many avocados do I now have? Well, let's see, I have one, two avocados. So one plus one is equal to two. Now, I know what you're thinking. That was too easy. So let me give you something a little bit more difficult. I like the avocados. I might I might stick with that theme. What is three plus four? Hmm. This this is I think a a more difficult problem. Well, let's go. Let's stick with the avocados. And in case you don't uh, know what an avocado is, it's a it's actually a, a very delicious fruit. It's actually the the fattiest of all the fruits. You probably didn't even think it was a fruit, even if you ate one. So. Um, Let's say I have three avocados. One, two, three. Right? One, two, three. And let's say you were to give me four more avocados. So let me put this four in, in yellow so you know that these are the, the ones you're giving me. One, two, three, four. So how many total avocados do I have now? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven avocados. So 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. And now I'm going to introduce you to another way of thinking about this. It's called the number line. And actually, I think this is how I do it in my head when I forget, if I don't have it memorized. So number line, I just write all the numbers in order. And I go high enough just so I can all the numbers I'm using are kind of in it. So you know the first number is 0, which is nothing. Maybe you don't know, but now you know. And then you go to 1, 2, 3, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keeps going, eleven. So we're saying three plus four. So let's start at three. So I have three here. And we're going to add four to that three. So all we do is we go up the number line, or we go to the right on the number line, four more. So we go one, two, three. Four. Notice all we did is we just increased it by one, by two, by three, by four, and then we ended up at seven, and that was our answer. We could do a couple of different ones. We could say, what is, um, what if I asked you what eight plus one is? Hmm, eight plus one. Well, you might already know it. You know, plus one is just the next number. But if we look at the number line, you start at eight, and you add one. Eight plus one is equal to nine. Let's do some harder problems. And just so you know, if you're a little daunted by this initially, you can always draw the circles. You can always do the number line. And um, eventually, over time, the more practice you do, uh, you'll, you'll hopefully memorize these. And you'll do these problems in like half a second. I promise you. You just got to keep practicing. Let's say I want to draw the number line again. Actually, I have a line tool, so I shouldn't give you all those ugly looking lines that I've been giving you. Look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. Wait, let me see. Oh, oh. Look at that. OK, so let me, that's a nice looking line. I, I'm going to feel bad to erase it later on. So let me draw a number line. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So let's do a hard problem. What is, I'm going to do it in different colors now, 5 plus 6. So if you want, you could pause the video and try this. You might already know the answer. Um, and the reason why I, I say this is a hard problem is because the answer has more numbers than figures. So you can't necessarily do it on your fingers. So let's get started with this problem. Actually, my phone is ringing. But I'm going to ignore the phone, because you're more important. So, OK, let's start at the 5. 
So we start at the 5, and we're going to add 6 to it. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're at 11. So 5 plus 6 is equal to 11. Now I'm going to ask you a question. What is 6 plus 5? Huh. Well, we're not going to see that. Can you switch the two numbers and get the same answer? Well, let's, let's try that. I'm going to try it in a different color so we don't get all confused. So let's start at 6, right? Ignore the yellow for now and add 5 to it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Huh, we get to the same place. And I think you, you might want to try this on a bunch of problems, and you'll see it always works out. That it doesn't matter what order you know. 5 plus 6 is the same thing as 6 plus 5. And that makes sense. If I have 5 avocados and you give me 6, I'm going to have 11. If I have 6 avocados and you gave me 5, I'm going to have 11 either way. Let's do a couple. Of, since this number line is so nice, I want to do a few more problems using it. Although, as I use it, I'm sure I'll just continue to confuse you because I'll write so much on top of it. But let's see. I'll use white now. What is? What is 8 plus 7? Well, if you can still read this, 8 is right here. right? We're going to add 7 to it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We go to 15. 8 plus 7 is 15. So hopefully, that gives you a sense of, of how to do these types of problems. and. More than, uh, I guess, this, and you're going to learn uh, multiplication a little bit. Uh, but, but these types of problems are, when you're getting started off in mathematics, these kind of require the most practice. And to some degree, you have to start memorizing them. But over time, you know, when, you, when you look back at, I want you to remember how you feel while you're watching this video right now. And then I want you to watch this video in like three years and remember how you felt when you're watching it now. And you're going to be, oh my god, this, this was so easy, because you're going to learn it so fast. So anyway, um, I think you have an idea. If, if you don't know the answer to any of the addition problems that, that we give you in the exercises, you can, you can press the hints, and it'll draw circles, and then you can just count up the circles. Or if you want to do it on your own so you get the problem right, you could draw the circles. Or you could draw a number line like we did in this presentation. Um, I think you might be ready to tackle the, the addition problems. Have fun. In the last video, we got some practice adding what we could consider smaller numbers. For example, if we added 3 plus 2, we could imagine that if maybe I had three lemons, 1, 2, 3. And if I were to add to those three lemons, maybe two lime, is it lime or limes? Let's just, well, the two, two green lemons or two, two more tart pieces of fruit. How, many, how much tart, sour fruit do I have now? Well, we learned in the last video we have one, two, three, four, five pieces of fruit. So 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. And we also saw that that's the exact same thing as if we add 2 plus 3. And I think that makes sense, because this is the same thing as starting with maybe you have two lemons and you add 3 lime to it, you're still going to end up with 5 pieces of fruit. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just like that. So it doesn't matter what order you add in, you're still going to get 5. And this, is, this way of thinking about addition, I view as the counting way of thinking about addition. The other thing we saw in the last video is a number line version. And they're essentially the same thing. So we could draw a line. And all a number line is, it lists all of the numbers in order. It lists all the numbers. And you can actually go as high as you need to go. You could go up to a million, gazillion, trillion. We won't do that. I wouldn't have space or time in this video to do it. And you actually can go as low as possible. We'll start at 0. Assuming in future videos, I'll tell you about numbers smaller than 0. And maybe you can think about what that might mean tonight. But let's start at 0. And 0 means nothing. If I have 0 lemons, if I have 0 lemons, it means I have no lemons. So 0, 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Let's go pretty high. 12, that way I can reuse the number line. 13, 14. I could keep on going, but maybe 14 will be enough for this video. But let's use a number line for these addition problems up here. So in the last video, just as a bit of a review, you can view 3 plus 2 as starting at 3. 
and then adding 2 to it, or going 2 greater than 3. And just going greater, or adding on the number line, is just moving to the right, or moving up by 2. So let's move up by 2. I'll do that in, I'll do that in this orange color. So let's move, go up by 2. So we started at 3, and we go up by 1, and then we go up by 2, or we're jumping, and we end up at 5 which is exactly what we got before. If we have three lemons, we add one lemon, we have four lemons. We add another lemon, we have five lemons, or lime, or tart pieces of fruit, whatever you might want to say. And when you look at this version of it, where you switched the order, we started at two, and we're adding three objects to it. In this case, they were lemons, or limes. So we're going to add three to it. One, two, three. And just like we expected, we got the same thing. We got 5 again. Now what I want to do in this video, and hopefully this was just a bit of review, is I want to tackle harder problems. I want to tackle slightly larger numbers. And then in the next video, and in this video I want to just give you practice dealing with the slightly larger numbers. And in the next video, we're going to dig a little deeper and think about what numbers even mean. But let's just get some practice understanding how do you actually do the addition problems with larger numbers. So let's. Let me write it in a nice soothing purple color. Let's say I wanted to add, let's say I wanted to add nine plus three. Nine plus three. Well, there's a couple of ways we could do it. We could draw circles again. We could say, let's see, I have maybe I'll draw stars. One, two, three, four. My stars are degrading. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine stars. And then I add three stars to it. So I add one, two, three stars. And then if you were to count the total number of stars, you would say, let me do that in a different color, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I now have twelve stars. So you'd say that nine plus three is equal to twelve. It's equal to twelve. If you looked at the number line, if you looked at the number line, you're starting at 9. Maybe you have 9 stars. And you add 1 star, 2 star, 3 stars to that, and you end up with 12 stars, which is the exact answer we got before. So you can do, you can do the same process when you start adding larger numbers, even though that now, and I want you to notice the difference now is our answer has two digits in it. And we'll talk more about digits in a future video. But all a digit is is a numeral, right? It has a 1 and a 2. That's what 12 is. I won't, go in, I won't dig too deep into that right now. I think you're pretty familiar with the number 12. But what I want to do is, now what happens when you start adding more, uh, when you start adding two-digit numbers like this? For example, if I were to add, if I were to add, if I were to add, 27 plus, plus, let's say, I don't know, plus 15. Now, if you had a lot of time on your hands and you uh, didn't care about how people judged you, you could draw out 27 circles and then draw out another 15 circles and then count the total number of circles you had, and that would give you an answer. Or you could draw a number line. You could draw a number line that went all the way to you know, whatever 27 plus 15 is. So it's going to be this really, really large number. But that would take you forever. So what I'm going to do is show you a way to do this type of problem where you really just have to know your addition, almost have it memorized, or at least if you don't have it memorized, be able to do something like this for relatively small numbers. And by doing it for the relatively small numbers, you can do the harder problems like this. So what you do, this is the fun part. You add, so let's get, and I'll talk more about what this means in the future. You look at each of the digits. So we call this place, the rightmost place, we call that the ones place. We call that the ones place. And why do we call that the ones place? Because 27 is 20 and 7 ones. It's 20 plus 7. It's 20 plus 7 ones. You could view it as it's 20 plus 7 pennies. And this place right here, is called the tens place. Now why is it called the tens place? I mean, there's a 2 right there. you know. It's the place is called the tens place. So putting a 2 here means two tens, right? The number 20, 
That's two tens. If I have one dime and you give me another dime, I now have two dimes, and that's 20 cents. So that's what the tens place is. And I don't want to confuse you. I just want to show you how to do these problems right now. We'll dig a little bit deeper in future videos, but I just want to give you that idea. But the way to do these problems is you just t look at the numbers in the ones place and add those up first. So you say, OK, I'm not going to worry about this whole thing right now. Let me just add the 7 and the 5. So I'm going to add the 7 and the 5. And if you don't know what that is, that is, hopefully you'll be able to do that in your head fairly shortly, you could look at the number line. Let's look at the number line here. So if you add 7, if you take 7 and you add 5 to it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We end up at 12. Or if you started at 5 and added 7, you'd also end up at 12. So let's write that down. We know that 7 plus 5 is equal to 12. So what we do is we say 7 plus 5 is equal to, and now this is a new thing. This is going to, you might, might be a little bit of a mystery, magical thing for you right now. And in future videos, I'll explain to you why this works. We write, we want to write the 12. 7 plus 5 is 12, but we just write the 2 here, and we carry the 1, right? 12, 1, 2. Well, we wrote the 2 there, but we put the 1 up here. Right? And the, the reason, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a simple reason for doing that right now, I'll give you a better reason in the future, is that you only, want, you only had space to put one digit here. And 12 is a two digit number. So we had to think of some other place to put that one. If you really want to think about it even more, 12 is the same thing as 10 plus 2. Right? That's the same thing as 12. So if we say 7 plus 5, that's the same thing as 12, which is the same thing as two ones. Right, two ones, two pennies, plus one dime, plus one ten, plus one dime. So we put that one dime in the tens place. So we really just said seven plus five is one ten plus two ones, or one dime plus two pennies. If that confuses you, just write, just write, say, well, I just write the ones digit of the two there, and I carry the one. And then you do the exact same thing in the tens place. You had the 1 plus the 2 plus the 1. So 1 plus 2, let's do that on the number line. This is fun. So let's see, 1 plus 2. Let's start. Let me do it in a vibrant color. Let me do it in this magenta. So we start at 1. We're going to add 2 to it, right? 1 plus 2. We take that 1 from our, from our 12. 1 plus 2, so you go up 1, 2. You end up at 3. Then you're going to add up another 1. So you're going to add another 1. So you're going to up, end up at 4. So you ended up at 42. And this was pretty neat, right? Because we didn't have to draw a number line all the way to 42, and we didn't have to draw 42 objects. Just by knowing what 7 plus 5 was, and by knowing what, what 1 plus 2 plus 1 was, we were able to figure out that 27 and 15 is 42. Let's do another example. Maybe I'll do a little bit of a simpler example. Let's say I had, let's say I had 78, 78 plus 3. We do the exact same thing before. We just look at the ones place only. So we look at 8 plus 3. 8 plus 3. What's 8 plus 3? Hopefully we can do that in our heads at this point. But let's just think about it. 8 plus 1. 8 plus 1 is equal to 9. 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. 8 plus 3 is going to be equal to 11. You could do that on the number line if it makes it easier to visualize for you. So 8 plus 3 is equal to 11. So what we do here is 8 plus 3 is equal to 11. Put this one right here, put that there, and carry the other one. Because 11 is 110, one dime plus one penny. That's 11. And then we add the tens place. One dime plus seven dimes is equal to eight dimes. So 78 plus 3 is equal to 81. And now there's one thing I want to show you. You don't always have to carry numbers like that. Only if the answer to one of these has more than one digit in it, right? 11 is a two digit number. So, for example, if I have 56 plus 2, here I could just say 6 plus 2 is 8, right? Hopefully we, we're getting good practice at this. So, 6 plus 2 is 8. And then I don't have anything to add this 5 to, so I just bring the 5 down here. So, 56 plus 2 is 58, just like that. And this is one you actually could have drawn on the number line. It wouldn't have been too hard. So if you were to draw the number line like that, you know, 0 would be way off to the left someplace. But let's say I had 50, you know, you'd have 49. You could keep going to the left, but you have 51, 
52. Actually, let me start a little higher than that, because I'm going to run out of space. Let me start at maybe 55, 56, 57, 58, 59. And I could go in both directions, keep going. But if we start at 56, right there, and we add 2, we go up 1, we go up 2. We end up at 58. So just like that, we're able to do that problem. I'll see you in the next video. What I want to do in this video is, one, just do a bunch of addition examples so that we really get some good practice and we really get warmed up with addition. And what I even more want to show you is that we now have all the tools we need to really tackle any, any addition problem. So let's just get warmed up with some one-digit addition problems. But these are the ones that always give me a little bit of a headache. Well, let's start with a really, uh, well, relatively straightforward. We want to say 2 plus 4. Well, we know what that is. We don't think we need to draw the number line uh, at this point, but you can if if you need to remember this. Two plus four is six. Not too bad. What about nine plus three? We saw that in the last video. Nine plus one is ten. Plus another one is eleven. Plus three is twelve. Nine plus three is twelve. And it's probably not a bad idea. It's good to visualize what's happening here, but it's also not a bad idea to be able to do these very fast, to be able to memorize at least what the one digit addition problems end up being. Let's do a couple of harder ones. Six plus seven. This one always I used to find uh, difficult to, to remember, but six plus seven is 13. Six plus seven is 13. Draw the number lines and the lemons and limes if, if, you, if you don't believe me. Six plus seven is 13. Eight plus 6, or 6 plus 8, is going to be 14. And that's the same thing as 7 plus 7 it is also going to be 14. And if you think about it, we got the same number here as there. And, and it makes sense, right? Because we took 1 away from 8, but we had 1 more than 6. So it's like you just shifted the 1 from the 8 to the 6. That's why we got the same answer. If that confused you, ignore it. Let's just do a couple of more of these. So 8 plus 8 is 16. These are things that hopefully you'll you'll be able to do super fast in the not too far off future. 5 plus 6. Well, that's 11. These are things, let me just do a couple of more really fast. So let's say 7 plus 9 is going to be 16. You might want to draw the number line if you don't believe me. And that's going to be the same thing as 8 plus 8 is also 16. And then 9 plus 9 is 18. And then 9 plus 8 is 17. And that's just a little bit of warm up. We didn't do all of the possible combinations of one digit numbers. But these are some of the ones that give people a little bit more headache. So now that we've done that, let's tackle some larger digit numbers that we started doing in the previous video. In the previous, maybe I'll leave that there for now. So let's do a couple of them. Let's do 22 plus 3. 22 plus 3. So we go to the ones place. 2 plus 3 is 5. We didn't have to carry anything. And then in the tens place, we just have this 1, 2 sitting here. So we just take that 2, 2 plus nothing. It's two tens. It's two dimes. So then we put that down there. So we get 25. Two dimes and five pennies, or 25 cents, depending on a lot of people. Money makes it easier to, be, uh, to understand things, or maybe, maybe to be motivated to understand things. All right, let's do another one. What is 38, 38 plus 38 plus 17? 38 plus 17. So what's so we look at just the ones place. What is 8 plus 7? Well, we haven't done that one yet. I'll do it up here. 8 plus 7 is equal to. Well, it's going to be one more than 8 plus 6. Right, eight plus six is fourteen. Then eight plus seven is going to be one more than that. So it's eight is going to be equal to fifteen. So in the in this problem, we write the five here. Let me write this in a different color. So the five and the fifteen, we'd write right down there in the ones place, and we would carry the one, because that's one dime. That's one ten. When you know, when I, it's one. You know, this fifteen. This is ten plus five. So this this one really means one ten or one dime. So we put that 1 up there in the tens place. And we have 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So you get 55. 1 plus 3 plus 1 is this 5. 38 plus 17 is 55. Or 5 tens and 5 ones. That's the same thing as 55. Let's do a couple more problems.
I think you'll see that we have the tools to tackle anything, any problem. Let's say we have 47. Let me switch colors just to, just so it stays interesting. 47 plus 9. 47 plus 9. So we just look at the ones place. 7 plus 9. We know what that is already. We did that problem already. 7 plus 9 is 16. So you write the 6 in the ones place and carry the 1. And that and now it's in the tens place, right? Because this is 110 right there. So one, ten, one dime plus four dimes is five dimes. So it's five dimes and six pennies. It's 56. Let's do slightly harder problems. Let me scroll down a little bit so we have some space to work with. Space to work with. That's, we always need that. All right, let's, let's, do, let's do something hard. 99 plus 88. That's a hard one. All right, but you just have to look at the parts of the problem, and you'll see how it'll all work out. You just say, what's, what's 9 plus 8? We did that up here. 9 plus 8, we know already, is 17. That's a good one to remember. 9 plus 8 is 17. But it's always good to be able to visualize it as well. So 9 plus 8 is 17. Carry the 1. And then we have 1 plus 9 is 10. 10 plus 8 is 18. Now this is interesting. We want to write 18 down. So we have write our 8 down there, right? We have 1 plus 9 plus 8. 1 plus 9 plus 8 is equal to 18. We wrote the 8 down there, and we say, hey, well, let's carry the 1. We carry the 1, but we carry it into the hundreds place. This was the ones place, the tens place. Now we're in the hundreds place. But there's nothing else in the hundreds place, so it just drops straight down. So you can almost just write the 18 just like that. So 99 plus 88 is 187. Let's keep doing some examples. Well, you can see it's all the same pattern. We could probably we could add two 10-digit numbers to each other as long as we're just careful about carrying our digits. So let's do 700. Let me switch colors because I'm. We'll do some three-digit numbers. Let's do a four-digit number. Let's not mess around. Let's do a four-digit number. So let's do 4,000. 368 plus 572. Let's see what happens here. All right. 8 plus 2. I'll write it down here. 8 plus 2. We know that that is equal to 10. You could do the number line if you need to. 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. Put the 0 in the 1's place, carry the 1. Now we're in the tens place. This is really one ten. This is six tens. This is seven tens. Or you could think of them as dimes if we're thinking about change. So one dime plus six dimes is seven dimes. Seven dimes plus seven dimes is fourteen. Let me write it like this. We could write one plus six plus seven is equal to one plus six is seven. Seven plus seven is fourteen. So this right here is going to be equal to fourteen. Carry the one. Now we have, let me do it in another color. I'll do it in pink. We have 1 plus 3. We're in the hundreds place now. Plus 5. 1 plus 3 plus 5. Well, 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 plus 3 is 4. Plus 5 is 9. 4 plus 5 is 9, so this is going to be equal to 9. Nothing to carry. We only had something in our ones place. Nine is just nine pennies. It's no dimes. It's just nine pennies. And then we go to the thousands place. Nothing to add to the thousands place. So you just take this 4,000. You see a four here, but since it's in the fourth digit to the left, this means 4,000. So this 4,000 right here, we don't have any other thousands to add it to, so we just bring it straight down. So you bring the four down there. So 4,368 plus 572 is 4,000. We'll put a comma there to make it easier to read. 4,940. Let's do a bunch more of these addition problems. So let's say I have 9,367 plus 2,459. 
So we can do this the exact same way we've done in the last few videos. We start in the ones place, or you can even think of it as the ones column. So you're going to add the seven ones plus the nine ones. So you're going to have seven plus nine, which we hopefully know by now, is 16. So what we do is we write the six in the ones place, and we carry the one. So if this one, let me switch code. If this one is going to be the same thing as that one right there. And this might look like a little bit of a mystery or magic. And the whole reason we did that is that this is the tens place. And when you write 16, you have six ones and one ten. If you view this as money, how would what's the best way to get $16 in a world where there weren't $5 bills, where you only had $1 bills, $10 bills, $100 bills, and so on? Only, only multiples of 10. And we don't have any $5 bills. In that world, you would represent 16 as one $10 bill. One ten dollar bill, just like that, and then six one dollar bills. Let me. So that's two one dollar bills. That's two more one dollar bills, and then that's two more one dollar bills. And so sixteen is. So I, the whole reason why I'm drawing it this way, why I'm even using this analogy or, or drawing the dollar bills, is to show you what these places mean. When I say, when I tell you. When I say that this right here is the tens place, I'm essentially telling you how many ten dollar bills do I have if I have sixteen dollars and I'm doing it as I'm 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 doing it as efficiently as I can in a world without five dollar bills. I only have ones, tens and a hundreds and thousand dollar bills and so forth. And this is the ones. So when I write it this way, I'm literally telling you I have one ten dollar bill. And I have six $1 bills. That's what $16 is. And so when I have 7 plus 9 is equal to 16, I, I say that I have six $1 bills, and I have one $10 bill. And I add that one $10 bill to everything else in the tens space. And the tens place is essentially telling you how many, that's the tens. I'll write it like, I could write it like that, or I could write the tens place. The, when, when I have 67, 67 means I have six $10 bills plus another seven ones. So that's six tens, five tens. So I add up everything in the tens place. So one plus six plus five. Let me do that in a new color. One plus six plus five is equal to one plus six is seven. Seven plus five is 12. So I write the two. In the tens place, because remember, this is 12 $10 bills, right? Because we're in the tens place. So I have two in the tens place, and then I put the one, I carry this one right here into the hundreds place. Because if I have 12 $10 bills, I have $120. I have one $100 bill, and I have two $10 bills. And I'll, I'll stop going to the dollar bill analogy just so we can uh, make sure we understand the process. But I think you see how it, how it works. You start at the right, you add the two numbers up. If it's a two-digit answer, you carry the, the, the leftmost digit up to the next column, and you just keep doing that. So let's do this one right here. 1 plus 3 is 4. Let me write this down in another color. 1 plus 3 plus 4. 1 plus 3 plus 4. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 4 is 8. So 1 plus 3 plus 4 is 8. Nothing to carry. It was a one digit number. And then finally, I have 9 plus 2. 9 plus 2. That's equal to 11. So I write the 1 down there, I write this 1. And then if there was anything left here, I would carry the the tens or, or the, the other 1, the 1 in the tens place in 11. I would carry it, but there's nowhere to carry it to. So I write it down just like that. So 9,367 plus 2,459 is 11,826. And I just put that comma there because it's easier for me to read. Let me do a bunch more of these. Let's do a really, really daunting problem. Let's do something in the millions. Just to, just to show you that you can do any, any problem. So let's say we have 2,349,000. Fifteen. Let's throw a zero in there, right? We have nothing in the hundreds place there, and I want to add that to. I'll switch colors just for fun. I want to add that to seven million. Seven million. Let's put a zero there. Fifteen thousand and nine hundred and ninety-nine. Let's add these two numbers. It seems like a hard problem, but if we just focus on each of the places, I think you'll find that it's not too bad. So we start off with 5 plus 9. 5 plus 9, that's equal to 14. Write the 4 down here, 
carry the 1. Then you go into the tens place. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 9, let me switch colors. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 9 is 11. Carry the 1. one now we're in the hundreds place. 1 plus 0 is 1, plus 9 is 10. So we write the 0 from the 10, carry the 1. Let me switch colors again. 1 plus 9 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. 15. Now we're in the 10 thousands place. 1 plus 4 is 5. And 5 plus 1 is 6. And there's nothing to carry. Now we're in the 100 thousands place. 3, we have nothing to carry. So we just have the 300,000 plus 0 hundred thousands. Well, that's just 300,000. And then finally, we're in the millions place. 2 million plus 7 million is 9 million. Just like that. So we, yeah, this is a super crazy number. 2,349,015 plus 7,015,999. Just by keeping track of our places and carrying the two digit numbers, or the second digit in the two digit numbers as necessary, we're able to figure out that the answer is 9,365,000 and 14. So hopefully this gives you a pretty good sense. So let me just do one more, just to really make sure that we, we really understand how all of this carrying business works. So let's do 15,999,001 plus 6,888,999. Let's just see how this one's going to turn out. This is this seems like a like a difficult problem, but once again, if we just focus and don't get lost, we're going to we're we're going to get the right answer hopefully. So 1 plus 9 is 10. Write the 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 9 is 10. Write the 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 9, that's 10 again. Write the 0, carry the 1. Now 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 8. 10 plus 8 is 18. Write the 8, carry the 1. 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 8 is 18. Write the 8, carry the 1. 1 plus 9 is 10. Plus 8 is 18. Write the 8, carry the 1. Now we're in the millions place. 1, plus, 1 million plus 5 million is 6 million. Plus 6 million is 12 million. Write the 2 million and then carry the 1. Because 12 million is 2 million plus 10 million. 10 million plus 10 million, right? This is 1 10 million plus another 1 10 million, right? That's 1 plus 1 is 2. And then we are done. 15,999,001 plus 6,888,999 is 22,888,000. So, you know, you just saw we we're just doing we're doing 7 and 8 digit number additions, but you could apply this if I had a number with 100 digits in it, you could do the exact same thing. You just have to go Start at the right, go each column by each column, and then if you end up with a two digit answer when you add the two digit when you add the two one digit numbers, you just carry the tens place. You just keep doing that and work your way left, and if you make no errors, you'll get the right answer.